this is one of my favourite one pot suppers, which I invented when my son was at college, when he wanted to feed a big load of his mates very cheaply, very quickly, very easily. And I suggested squid, which sounds like a funny choice, but actually it's a really good thing to buy frozen from any supermarket fish counter. And it's sold in 500 grams or one kilo bags. And you just lay it out to defrost, it takes about 10 minutes in a warm kitchen. And you end up with these funny little bags, basically, which is the sack, and you just squeeze out um, the tentacles. Sometimes you get another baby uh, squid inside. Sometimes you, I've even found a little baby crab in there. You, it's quite random what you find. And they're very easy to prepare. You just slice them in half and then in half again. So you have pieces like that. So while I've been preparing the squid, I've been cooking the beans and I'm now going to drain them because I'm doing everything in one pan. So while I'm not going to use that hot, that very fast uh, burner now, I'm going to a lower temperature, add some olive oil, any old olive oil will do, you could use, you don't have to use olive oil, um, if you've got some other oil that will do. Just enough to coat the um, bottom of the pan and then we're going to cook the onion. And we got ready also some garlic. I like quite a lot of garlic, but if you don't like garlic, just leave it out. In they go. These are just sliced up roughly. You could chop them if you want. It's a very forgiving dish, very flexible. I sometimes add mushrooms, or if I'm cooking it for a vegetarian meal, or I haven't been able to get squid or chicken, you can use mushrooms, just whole mushrooms. Um, put them in when you would put the squid in. Absolutely delicious. As I said, my son used to cook it when he was at college. All his friends then learnt to make it. All their friends learnt to make it. So there's a little satellite of people that cook versions of this dish all over the place. So you may already have come across it. The onion's now got to the point where it's half cooked, um, it's slippery, it's taking colour, so I'm going to add the garlic quite a lot. You can add less or more. Um, just brown that around with the onions for a bit until it's aromatic. And suddenly, whoosh of garlic. And then in comes the chorizo, or chorizo, if you're a Spanish. Sliced chorizo from a sausage I've used, which I've peeled, which is a laborious job, but so worth doing. Otherwise, you end up with bits of string in your mouth. Um, that's cooking around with the onions, and I'm going to increase the heat slightly. And quite quickly, all the oily juices will come out of the chorizo and colour the onion, a lovely golden colour. And that is the point when you start adding other things, not before. The, we want the chorizo weeping, I think is a word you could use. Um, you can see I've got everything I need around me in a very small space. So it just goes to prove that you can cook this, you could cook it in a galley kitchen. And my mum brought up four children with a kitchen about this size, um, amazing. So it just goes to prove that you don't need a great big kitchen, you don't need a lot of equipment, you just need a sharp knife. Something to sharpen your knife with is crucial. Keep it sharp. More accidents in kitchens happen because people haven't got a sharp knife than having a sharp knife. Um, a chopping board, and that's about it. Something to cook everything in. A one pot. <laughs> it's starting to go pale and then any minute it's going to start oozing out its lovely fat that's quite hot. You don't need to add any chilli to this because it's quite hot from the chorizo. That's another good thing about using it. So you'll see the onion has flopped down quite considerably. The chorizo is browning and also appears to have wilted down. In comes the squid. I love this moment. In it goes. A 
it's all stirred around and takes on all the chorizo juices, all those lovely yellow oily juices. As I said, you could do this with chicken if you don't fancy squid, but I really recommend it. Um, and can you see the tentacles are all starting to jump to attention? They're coming alive. And as soon as they're white, we're going to add a splash of um, red wine if we've got it. If we haven't, we'll just put, go straight on with the rest of the recipe and put the stock, tin tomatoes, and then it all simmers away gently while you um, powder your nose or whatever you do. Putting in the dregs of last night's wine. Let that bubble up. If you haven't got any wine on the go, no worries. It's not essential ingredient. Right, next in, a couple of tins of tomatoes. Chopped tomatoes. Don't be tempted to buy ones with herbs, thinking that that's going to be better, because it isn't. The herbs always taste um, as if they're dried herbs, not fresh herbs, and spoil the dish. Because this is all fresh flavours. It's a healthy dish, actually. And it's got everything in it you need, although um, some, some nice crusty bread always goes well with this. It's a bit, think of it as being like a chilli, a chilli con carne, but much, much quicker. So that's all going to simmer away, and I'm going to add some stock as well. This is um, a stock cube in some hot water, also from the kettle. I think I won't put it all in because this dish isn't quite big enough. So the squid's cooking away, all the ingredients are simmering away, and if you don't like squid, use chicken or mushrooms. Um, we're just waiting for it to all soften up and merge and the juices to concentrate, and then we add chickpeas, the beans, and coriander, and it's done. I'm draining the chickpeas. Two cans. But don't forget to wash the coriander because the roots are probably filthy. You can actually save those and use them. You can cut all the stalk um, because it's all edible and delicious. There we are. You don't need any knife skills for that. That's just like that. Nice and rough and ready. Salt and pepper. I'm doing a generous seasoning because I know it's going to need a lot, but we'll taste it right at the end. In go the chickpeas, nicely drained. Stir those through. Um, this thickens up the dish. You can see it suddenly looks as if it could feed about 10 people now. Once those are in, in come the beans, the lovely beans. It looks so pretty, doesn't it? Okay, everything just warms through and then we add the coriander and it's done.